Hey, it's John Reed, and I'm pleased to welcome back to no. the podcast, Julian Devot. How's it going? No, oh, it's exciting to be back here. Yeah, we've done videos. I think we've done podcasts, but we are at SAP Control in 2017. We're yeah. going to have a sappy podcast. Let's just tell, <laughs> tell our listeners that right off the bat. This Let's is going to be all the SAP you can handle and more. This is the SAP conference after all, right? Yeah, yeah. It's actually a really interesting gut check that we can do here because we're at a smaller conference that's dedicated towards SAP controlling professionals who are in some ways somewhat old school SAP, but they're also kind of at the heart of how SAP is changing in a sense because so much of S4 HANA is about the financial core. So they're kind of in the middle of it, but they're not always ready for that yet. Yeah, it's interesting. So. We had a, uh, uh, you know, kind of raising your hand type of uh, interviews and it yeah. was pretty much in line with the ASOC research that says that, you know, it's about a third of the SAP install base is l a boat S4, but only about 8% have implemented it. Right. And in the room, there was really almost nobody who was right. really in the S4 on implementation journey. Well, and I, th I think another interesting piece of that is that those that are looking at S4 HANA, they're very much, they're not thinking at all about the S4 HANA public cloud version or what's called S4 HANA cloud. Uh, some of them ha talked about the hosting options. But yeah. but the the reason that I think that's interesting is that I think the awareness around what the public cloud transition would mean just isn't there. And in, in other words, like, that would be too much for these companies to take on right now. They have too many customizations <clears throat> and they have functional requirements that are a lot deeper than what the cloud version has just yet, I think. Yeah, so. there's, there's this piece which is really about the maturity of the cloud, but at the same time, we're talking about uh, to, to, to some of the customers and say, well, you know, we're still on this old yeah. version where we're not even finished rolling it out. So we're not really considering now these right. new things and, and yeah. this ERP method as well. So or cloud ERP, it's it's way beyond what they can handle on the day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, and I think what's really interesting is just the timing of our discussion because next week is SAP Tech Ed, which is going to be mess. kind of a, <laughs> the big extravaganza of SAP technical announcements. I'm not actually going to be there myself. That's the Vegas one is next week. I'll be in Barcelona later on this fall. Yeah, Will you I'll be in Vegas next week? Yeah, I'll be at the Nerdfest right. next week in Vegas. Yeah, <laughs> so it'll be a striking contrast, I think, to this event in a lot of ways, which is interesting because this, this event gives you kind of the view of at the core of this, not even the business user, but like the the project team expert, the super user. Yeah, it's more super users than, yeah. than end users. And those are the people who are really kind of deploying and adopting those solutions. But we see a huge difference between the tech ed leaders, innovators, uh, or what SAP is even promising for the future, when on a day-to-day -day basis, those people are really far, far from there. Right. And, and that's something I want to get into with you. Just briefly for the listeners to tell us a little bit about your current role, who you're working for, and what your role is day in, day out. What are you doing? Sure, absolutely. So, uh, Julian Dalat, I'm uh, the S4 HANA Center of Excellence Lead for North America for Bluefin Solutions. And um, yeah, a lot of the customers we've been talking to recently really care about S4. They're looking at it, and we do a lot of roadmap exercise with them. So we look at, well, what's their business context, their business model, um, um, and is their ERP still relevant for that? Then we look into business processes, how they're currently using it, what they should be doing with it, going to testing, then infrastructure, uh, going to uh, custom code. I mean, all of that to in, in order to you know develop a, a roadmap, including cost and benefits, basically, of either staying where they are, going to change just a database to HANA or adopting S4 HANA and potentially adopt more um, uh, uh, new features from IoT and big data and, and those future future things. And you did a presentation today on the business case around S4 HANA and, and how you walk companies through that, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we have this this methodology we developed because we had more and more questions and we tried to have like a repeat repeatable process for that and not to pick on SAP, but SAP does that pretty frequently and it adds up like a whole laundry list of licenses they need to buy as mm -hmm. opposed to how are we going to solve your day-to-day -day problem and what's the real value for, for your company. Right. With that in mind, what struck you the most? I, to me, I think it was it was kind of what we were talking about before we started this podcast, which is that in a way, SAP is almost, I don't want to say moved on to Leonardo, 
because, kind of, but still. but in a way, Almost from a there. branding <laughs> perspective, it sort of feels that way to some extent. But in terms of like customer awareness, for example, here, there's some pretty basic questions happening, fairly understandable questions. So, for example, like, what is BW for Hana? Right. Like, yeah, is it, well, how is it different? Is it BW on Hana? BW yeah. for Hana? I'm pretty sure that we didn't ask that question. I'm pretty sure a majority of the audience did not never heard about Leonardo. Right. When SAP is doing all it can to be Leonardo and explain it and, and what it really means for their customer. So it's very interesting that, as we know, it takes a lot of time between SAPs starting to talk about a topic and, and being becoming mainstream enough that the power users really understand what it means for them. Right. I think we're at that level with S4. We're way out of it for, for, for Leonardo. And where are we now in terms of the software release did did we just now have? I know we're waiting from the on-premise S4 HANA the significant update seventeen oh nine. Yeah, that's it? been released last week actually. So okay. seventeen oh nine was released on released on uh, September fifteenth, um, and we can't call it S4 Finance or Simple Finance yeah, anymore. Yeah, no, not Smart Those Finance. Those days are no, over. No. Now so, it's the sexy name of <coughs> S4. It's, it's S4 HANA Enterprise Management. Enterprise Enterprise Management, very sexy. N not to be con uh, confused with S4 HANA Cloud Edition 1708, right? Uh, which been released about a month earlier. Right. Um, it's it's very interesting because um, to me the the release from last year 1610. Uh, released in October 2016 was was good enough for let's say 80% of the cases. Um, um, it was missing some core feature, but you could get started with it. 1709 is where you got, uh, so you went first with finance and then it went into logistics and now it goes into the real complicated things like variant configuration, mm -hmm. uh, which is how you make it make your product unique to your customer. And most industry solutions have been now transferred to, to it except one or two, uh, namely, especially around public sector. Right. So, so I mean, the release is in 95% of the cases now working the way it was before or better. Okay, tough <laughs> anti-marketing question for you. <laughs> is this really that different than Sweet on HANA? It is, absolutely. So Sweet on HANA to me is really just a technical upgrade. You, you are renew, renewing your hardware and you take this as a benefit to move on to HANA for performance reasons and, mm -hmm. and trying to leverage that and maybe start integrating into your BW better. Okay. But it's limited functional. Uh, as, as a finance expert and in this controlling environment that we are in today, the, the impact is very limited. I think one of the comments that we had in a previous conference is that, well, if, if your data is crap, uh, if your system is crap, you want it. You you really want it to go faster in your face, right? So it's it's kind of not really a functional benefit. S four is definitely way different than Sweden Hana. It's it's a full functional improvement uh, mm. for, and therefore the business case around it is is going to be way better. Got it. And we're going to get back to the business case part. As for BW for Hana. Very different than BW on Hana, or I mean, I'm just getting a handle on that. I feel like <laughs> so, so, so. Yeah, there's there's three steps to BW. There's the classic BW, right? Then you had BW on Hana. You just switched the database, yeah. so it's performance improvement, which is really interesting, right? But just just especially faster. if you have like a a really huge system and you're and you have a lot of aggregates and stuff like that. Yeah, there was also yeah. a limitation related to the BI accelerator BIA. So it was like mm. another technical thing there going on. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But BW4 HANA is a complete way of uh, leveraging your S4 HANA system. Got it. So it's, it's getting rid of all the things that we needed in the past because, because of performance. So before it was the old system with a turbo, and now you're really switching to, to a new type of engine, and therefore there's new tools and, and, and new modeling things that you can do that's way better. And my understanding is that one of the better things about BW for HANA is that it's also the the base for future planning and consolidation. Is that yeah. right? That it runs off of that? <laughs> so that would be another reason for potentially considering it. Is that yes, correct? absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting. There's been a lot of discussions around is BW that, uh, and it came mm. back again in this conference today. I, I think it's, it's just not dead for multiple reasons. The first one is, well, not all your data is in SAP, believe it or not. Most mm. customers have data elsewhere. 
POS data mm. or even just planning data. It's, so how are you going to combine your SAP data with your non-SAP data? In the SAP uh, digital core, uh, you could use the Sybase to have you know hot data and warm data and cold yeah, data. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that yeah. doesn't require the BW piece. But it's when you want to try to bring SAP with non-SAP that you need this BW piece. So, right. It's when you combine the two elements of that it becomes the issue. Right? Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That where it becomes more important. Someone keeps lurking outside the door. They <laughs> must be really curious as to what's going on in here. Once again, I've commandeered an empty hotel room, so you never know what's going to happen, folks. Uh, so, okay. And and then the, the final piece of the puzzle around the product stuff is that there's so much happening in the planning, consolidation, and analytic side of SAP. Absolutely. I yeah. went to a session yesterday with the true qua guys yeah they're very good on, on they that. are yeah. and i wanted to cry by the end of it <laughs> they're he, good at that is that is well because <laughs> he was showing these slides scott was from yeah. true Quad, and it's called ken cross yeah yeah and world. he's super sharp guy yeah, he, he knows his stuff yeah i was just like oh my god there's so many planning and consolidation products Absolutely, and yeah. and there's this analytics for cloud yeah tied to, which is tied to the digital boardroom <laughs> yep it I mean, do SAP customers ask you about this? The reason I'm bringing this up is because I think it's tough for SAP to expect customers to wrap their heads around things like Leonardo mm-hmm. when when they're struggling to make sense of the, of the planning and analytics portfolio. Are you starting to understand where SAP is going with all of that? Uh, well, I think it's kind of a, a race that they're doing, and uh, and they, they still have to carry the old parts, and that's where they sometimes have issues. So as you said, yeah, they're in, especially in planning and consolidation, there's so many applications that they're doing on-premise, in the cloud, uh, right. BPC. BPC has, I think, if I'm not mistaken, four concurrent versions that are recommended. Ugh. Four of them, just BPC, right? Then you go, of course, to, to, to the analytics cloud, the BIIP, there's a cloud for consolidation as well, just for that. So all of those are very confusing for the day-to-day operations guys. And at the mm-hmm. same time, they're trying to push new boundaries. And to me, that's SAP reacting to its market. Uh, Leonardo, no, coincidentally, uh, has a name that goes against Einstein or mm. um, what's the other one? Um, Watson. Right. Right. So... SAP had a lot of tools in a box and didn't know what to do with it. So trying to make sense of it um, with Leonardo as an umbrella and trying to define a process around it, this is where what they're pushing now. You will probably see that a lot more next week and take it as, well, Leonardo, they're trying to not make it look like a toolbox. It's definitely a process that's going to solve mm. uh, business model changes. So it's going right. from the digital core to the digital company, probably. Right. And I, I've been calling Leonardo the next generation kitchen sink, which I'm sure as, <laughs> they will love it. That's SAP true. really see that marketing really loves that. <laughs> um, but but if any of our listeners are just wondering, Leonardo had its roots as as a SAP sort of IoT right. play, Internet of Things play, but now it's it's been revitalized as the umbrella for all of SAP's sort of next advance, right? Everything yep. from artificial intelligence to um, machine learning, blockchain. predictive blockchain. It's all part of Leonardo. And actually, the interesting part of Leonardo, which I, I think a lot of people missed because I missed it for a while, is that the interesting part is the methodology part around that while there are some products and solutions in that umbrella, the core of the Leonardo thinking is to sit down with a company and mm-hmm. essentially, you know, I, I hate to use the phrase design thinking because it sounds like I'm trying to sell something and I, mm-hmm. I don't actually make any money when I say it. <laughs> oh, really? Shit. No. <laughs> but but sit down with the company and basically say, you know, we're going to partner with you on on this project. How can we adapt these these tools and this thinking to your business model and what your needs are. So essentially, it's not as out of the box as, as what SAP's ever done before, Absolutely, which is yeah. super interesting. Now, whether SAP's customers as a group are going to want to sit down with SAP on these topics versus any number of vendors, I think remains to be seen, but we shall see. Yeah, I think it's 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 early, and that's why uh, actually one of the key tools in that toolbox, and I'm sure if you saw that, is actually build this uh, right. design thinking drawing tool. Yeah. Um, that's the key one, actually, interestingly. Under Sam Yen's, Under Sam Yen's um, team. design team. Uh, and, and it's 
Yeah, it's design, whiteboarding, and it's business model reimagination. We're actually starting at Bluefin Solutions, our new uh, center of excellence around Leonardo. So, so you guys are all over it. We're all nice. uh, we like we like it when it's new and complicated. So, and I, I think the target is today SAP sits down with customers and co innovate. Uh, but from their product ties, because at the end of the right. day, yeah, SAP yeah. is a software company or solution company. Maybe. As these innovation products take hold, they'll they'll resell them. And exactly. All that type so of stuff. so yeah. so we've been discussing a lot of those with SAP as an SAP mentor. I, I was able to go into some of those discussions. So think about blockchain. A lot of people think about finance and cryptocurrency type of thing, but. SAP is more is an ERP, so you can start thinking about value chain. Mm -hmm. And um, if uh, a, a high tech company that's building laptops in China, not to name anybody, that starts with a Li and ends with right. a Novo, uh, <laughs> uh, they would have all their suppliers connected to their blockchain, and then potentially could, um, you know, trigger uh, orders and goods movements, and and without being uh, you know, tempted to to do hacking or stuff like that. Um, mm. So for all the logistics parts, you could start being doing blockchain, um, IoT. We're talking now to to a customer, um, consumer product uh, for their machine, trying to see how much they are, um, you know, consuming what type what type of products they're consuming. Because for all of those things, the the, the the companies are not selling directly to their customer. They're selling to a Walmart, to Target not to the end customer, so they don't really know how people are using their tools. Mm -hmm. I was talking at lunch with a with a manufacturing company and there's there's one company that builds tools and a lot of cost is from depreciation. Let's say you rent uh, a big saw, a chainsaw. At, I mean, I'm in Miami, so we had to use chainsaws after the hurricane. Uh, but a lot of times when you rent those tools for the day, it's not really being used for the whole day. It's going to be used for a couple hours. So if you had an IoT type solution that's connecting, then you could rent by really the usage. And from there, you could have a lot of processes that follow that, depreciation being one of them, but maintenance being another one. So there's a lot of consequences to changing your business model there. That really, as of today, I think SAP has some of the tools to do it, but not the process and, and not in a productized turnkey way. So I think that's where they're going with Leonardo. And in your thinking in terms of establishing your practice, are you thinking that it, can companies leapfrog if let's say they're on a older version of let's call ECC or whatever SAP is calling that? Can they leapfrog into a Leonardo project or do they need to go through an S4 HANA transition first in your mind? Yeah, that's a curve one. We didn't talk about it before, but uh, I threw you a curveball there. <laughs> no, yeah, I, this is we're I, off script now. Yeah, we actually never thought about it, but I think they could because I mean, technically, Leonardo IoT is mm. is is not requiring as for technically. Right. Um, you could trigger events in your ECC environment with BAP is just the way you were doing before, creating an order or right. all, things like that. So. Yes, I think they should be able to. Uh, it's, it's I think, a different way to look at your IT platform. It's not starting with software and pain points and, you know, roadmaps. It's about right. what's my business model and um, what can I do to get there? And looking at this toolbox from SAP is, is, is where you want to start looking at the solution. Does that make sense? Yeah. So let me tell you where, where I'm thinking right now on this, which is, I, I don't really disagree with SAP's vision of the digital core combined with the Leonardo per se for sort of extending that digital core into new business models. Mm -hmm. Essentially, what you might think of it as a more open enterprise, right, where we want to be more adaptable, we want to make more decisions in real time. We want to connect right. to customers more easily. Mm -hmm. We want software that's easier to use. All those things are kind of part of that. And I don't really object to any of that in the sense that like, if you go to all of SAP's competitors, if you go to cloud ERP shows like I've been doing this year, like they're all preaching a lot of those same things in mm -hmm. various ways. I don't really disagree with that because when you look at it, it's not just vendors trying to sell new stuff. You know, right. that, that is part of it. <laughs> Let's not they deny do? that. <laughs> but but I think it's, it is a response to real world conditions. I mean, we, right. when we saw in our keynote, mm -hmm. uh, change management keynote, it was all about sort of 
market disruptions and even during the keynote it's like <laughs> news is coming out around toys r us and right. how bankruptcy uh, once dominant mm -hmm. um you know retail outlet is like in the throes and and you can you know you have amazon and whole foods and all the changes that are implied by that mm -hmm. um, and you could kind of go industry to industry to varying degrees and 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 I see a, a lot of what SAP is talking about is 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 a way for their customers to to think about those changes and how to respond to them. That works for me. I, th I think where I where I would struggle with around SAP's thing is first of all things around articulating the stages of that journey in a way that makes sense. Right. Speaking to people where they're at now, because like to the point of this show, like how many people are really on that page? A lot of the folks here are. Pretty senior SAP people, but what they're looking for is that one piece of information that will solve the problem they're dealing with today. Right. Absolutely. You know, yeah. they're having a configuration issue that prevents them from uh, itemizing certain parts, or they're having trouble with a ledger entry that that they're trying to add for right. some or, additional. Or they have regulations changing. Or regulations are changing, and revenue recognition. I mean, revenue recognition alone is slowing a lot of these folks down. Absolutely. I just talked yeah. with one person here who's been working on a RevRec project for a year, and she she's lost some hair. <laughs> yeah. You know, she didn't have that much hair, <laughs> so. You know, so I think that's where I see a big disconnect for SAP Absolutely. to overcome, you know. Yeah, it is. And I fully agree about this disconnect. Um, and, and we've seen that a lot. I was that, that thing that was my biggest shock at this conference uh, this year is is this disconnect between what SAP is preaching, where they're going, and what, what the day-to-day -day people are thinking about. The but at the thing. same time, I think with this... Um, with this Leonardo discussion, um, I think it shows a maturity of the organization. So, as you were saying, yeah, maybe they can leapfrog not having a digital core to rethink their business process and using some of those digital tools. Um, but I doubt that those organizations are ready to go there. Um, right. I, I think it's it, yes. it really shows a maturity of the organization. So if they're dealing with now with revenue recognition, uh, with GDPR, the Global Data Protection Regulation in the uh, EU, there's been a recent change in India around taxes, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. also thrown a lot of companies uh, off board. Um, so what do you do if your company is threatened Right, and you want to kind of improve or change your business model, but at the same time you're struggling with regulations, or you are not done with your deployment of your ERP that you started five years ago, and you still have five countries to go over. Right, so uh, that's 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 a good question. I think that's where the disconnect is. It's always taboo to to criticize customers, right? Because <laughs> in our industry, the customer is sort of always right in a sense. And, and you never want to diminish what a customer is struggling with because a lot of them are trying to get their jobs done. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and if you're coming in and talking like about digital business mm -hmm. and they're trying to like fix a table that's broken, <laughs> exactly, you yeah. look like an idiot. Absolutely. I, I get that. But at the same time, I think what I've been trying to provoke these customers into thinking a little bit is that change is coming. Like right. and and you can either initiate more of that change or you can sort of be essentially victimized by it. You know, with with the onset of robotics, I would apply that to your own career as well as your company. Right? That that this is not a real good time for people who like a nine to five clock in clock out kind of existence. Like, not that you can't have a structured schedule, but in terms of like the just the intellectual this, curiosity and right. the determination to push things forward in your own skills and in in your company, like. Without that, I don't really see how you're going to make it. I just don't. I could be wrong. I just don't see it. I, I, I think the operating model of, of IT, because a lot of people we've been talking to as well are actually functional in the IT group, so kind of you know on, on, on the border there. Um, their jobs are changing as well. So one example is that we have in a, a Bluefin, we're a mine tree company. We've been acquired by this uh a company and there's a big section that we're doing around support and maintenance. And we have now this concept about delivery factory, which is really not specific to us. It's been there around for a little bit. But the idea is that you just don't do maintenance and keep the lights running, but you gradually also deliver new features. And and now the goal of the of this center of excellence is to have one bot per employee. Mm. And the goal is to automate some of those processes because right. it's not to replace them. The goal is to do more with right. the same resources. So um, 
they have robots now to start triaging some of this because you know how long you've been waiting on a ticket at SAP has been right. sitting there uh, assigned to somebody but that guy or girl is on vacation or not there whatever so there's this types of bots that are doing the triage I know actually that um, the SAP support is now also using um, AI to start s proposing some of those solutions better than just a keyword search so um, so they're doing that a lot, and I um, and I've heard today about a company that's using that for uh, HR onboarding, trying to automate some of that process right. in a more human way. But at the same time, right. when you have volume, how do you deal with that? A lot of the discussions around automation that we're hearing, the realistic ones are not about hey, you're going to lose your job. It's it's more about we want to free our people up for for higher impact mm -hmm. work, right? Absolutely. And yeah. and that becomes a lot of it. Now, granted, there are some situations where head count reductions come into play for some of it, but a mm -hmm. lot of it, the emphasis is really on freeing that up, freeing up people for more customer facing stuff. And, right. and, and, and I think that's where, what I think about the stages of ERP, like, so a lot of the folks here are, are still, I would argue in, in, in the first phase of thinking around, yeah, we're evaluating S4 HANA. And what that's about is standardizing. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily Processes. about becoming a digital core. It's really about cleaning up, honestly, from past mistakes, from mm -hmm. over-customization. Right. It's a little bit like the, the, the enterprise software it's, it'd be the personal equivalent that you really can't run an XP computer. You're not <laughs> safe from viruses and threats. Right. You're not compliant. You know, so like why would you, right? you and, mm -hmm. and, and so this is the opportunity to, to move from XP to whatever Windows 10 <laughs> in the SAP world, but also in the process to incorporate a lot of better thinking around, mm -hmm. hey, we don't really need 25 different instances and versions, exactly, and, yeah. you know, whether you're moving to S4 HANA or not, like it's, it's really about like right, cleaning that up. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, yeah. Once you clean that up and once you start grappling, for example, with a better master data framework and mm -hmm. things like that, then I think you can start thinking about the next phase, which is what are the implications of data visibility? Mm -hmm. And and when you're talking with folks here, you hear again and again those that have gone down that path that having access to accurate information that right and if Single it's not real time, of the truth. If, yeah, if it's not real time, it's close to it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like every day refreshed, or sometimes it's real time. Oh, if it's hours, hourly is good enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, you're making better decisions and suddenly the light bulbs are starting to go off. Right. And and I think that's phase two. And then I think the third phase is where the implications of this business model change start to come in because now you have a modern core, which is not just compliant, but hopefully mm -hmm. as SAP adds more and more APIs, mm -hmm. it's more of an open framework, which allows you to pull data out or perhaps in some cases pull data in. Um, now you're <clears> looking <throat> at your you're, you're starting to look at the Leonardo pilot projects, right? Exactly, you're starting yeah. to, and, and this is not about, oh, you know, hey, you know, IoT is the best, but it's it's more about like, hey, what if we put sensors on this thing? Or right. Would it make a difference in in our um, customer service or exactly. predictive maintenance exactly. or whatever, whatever mm -hmm. it might be? And you're starting to look at the pilot projects around that. And I think it will be really interesting, like, if, if, if that kind of holds up, like, where the customers here are at in the coming years. Because right now, I don't even hear that many conversations around the, the data visibility part. Like, some of them have access to analytics tools, but they're all struggling with the fact that they're not really getting a full view of the data. Mm -hmm. They're looking at one piece. They're not... The yeah. system's not really integrated. They're all complaining about master data problems. Yeah, that's always been the case. But I think at, um, I think the question is, is it because of the customers or is it because of the people inside the customer? Because those problems are kind of really operational. Yeah, so at yeah, the operational, yeah, 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 yeah. you care about master data, about transactions, right. about closing the books. One of the guys I was talking about today, they just um, delivered the project to one of their uh, new countries. And then after 20 days, it's still not closed. That's operations. They need to close the books. Yeah, uh, And then and then you have um, um, strategic, uh, tactical. Right. Tactical is really where you need to rationalize yeah, yeah, my systems, yeah. automate and only handle exceptions. Right. And then you go into strategic, yeah, new business models. And I'm pretty sure that in at least a significant portion of those uh, of of those customers, we have different people at different levels different, thinking doing different, different things. things. Right, yeah. So one of the companies I was talking to is interesting because I met them 
two years ago when we were working with SAP on product lifecycle costing, this new tool for innovation around product costing and simulation. And today they're still not using that tool. And part of it is also, well, it's just an expensive tool. So right. <clears throat> that's also part of it is, well, in the, Leonardo is great. The process is great. Right. It's a bunch of tools. If I need five different tools to do this new thing, yeah. is it going to be worth it? And how does licensing work? You know, because some some of these vendors I've been visiting their shows and they their commitment is to offer as much as possible within the product. Right. And and that's where SAP needs to go with a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Though not all of it. Some of it can be add on, but um and, and then, you know, you have a lot of customers that are still more reeling from some of the recent lawsuits and stuff and they're a little reluctant to to they're they're more worried about being audited. They're trying to figure that Absolutely, out. Absolutely. Yeah. So how can you go forward with with things that have data usage implications? When Absolutely. Yeah. So so SAP has a lot of work to do on that front as well. Which exactly. I think, yeah. I think we're going to hear more a little more about that in the bigger conferences. We didn't really talk about that much here because the well, people here right, are more yeah. like mm -hmm. under the gun with revenue recognition <laughs> exactly, and stuff yeah. like that. They don't really want to talk about APIs here so much. But no, it's it's. I think it's a different crowd again. I think those three yeah, levels of operational that makes sense. strategic and tactical, tactical but I don't, strategy. Yeah. But I don't know that you can just be operational anymore. I think that's part of the point. That's the question. You that's know? a better question. Yeah. I think that's part of the point. Is that there's a shift that has to occur there. Mm -hmm. uh, Hasso warned us all years ago that the transactional and the mm -hmm. analytical are, yeah. are merging. And I yeah. think that goes for human beings as well as uh, software, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah. And one of the things that I think we continue to struggle with when you go to SAP shows is customers asking about business case. And this happened right. today. That's exactly what we right. did. <laughs> uh, we were sitting in a, in a session there was a networking session. Uh, there were about maybe 30 customers there. And one of the first questions was like, how well, do I, how case, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so, and I know Bluefin, you, you guys have been busting your tail on, on this very topic. So yeah, what, what kind of responses do you have to that? So, well, the, the standard consulting answer, it depends, but uh, <laughs> right, yeah, it yeah. depends a lot. No, we, <clears throat> so I, I, that's what we were presenting today. It's about how to build a business case for, um, for us, for HANA and, and we have a whole uh, process around it, looking again at your context, um, your uh, functional testing, infrastructure, coding, and then from there build build your roadmap and your your business case. I think that uh, we've had an incredible response to this particular uh, methodology and and output. Uh, what strikes me the most with this is that is the exact same process for uh, I've done it personally for about twelve customers right now. Um, and the answer is always different because the context is different, the business model is different, and um, and we've seen interesting results uh, where sometimes the answer is well, sweet on Hana, and sometimes the answer is well, S four definitely and 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 tomorrow you really need it. Uh, an example here was uh, a, a company um, that was in uh, high tech in in Tampa was. Um, uh, they had all those struggle with availability to promise. So promising products to uh, customers that they did not have, they were over promising basically products and they could not deliver and just untangling this was costing them millions of dollars every year. So there is value into uh, those operations. Uh, it just depends on, on what you need, right? And what, what your uh, situation is. I really liked your summary points. You have five of them, so I'll just go through them and you can comment on them when we you say, S4 HANA is not just a technical upgrade. Your roadmap is unique to your contacts. You need a holistic approach. There are many tools available to help, and you can start today with small steps, which the last one's a big one, right? It is, yeah. I, th I think, yes, indeed, S4 is a big project that involves the whole organization or a large part of it. However, you don't have to wait for the deadline of 2025 to start. Um, some of the examples we had were, well, you can start archiving things. Because mm -hmm. HANA is expensive, you pay by the size. So if you reduce your size, well, today you will see benefits because some of your queries will be faster uh, mm -hmm. or transactions could be faster. And at the same time, it would be cheaper when you move there. Um, you can also start coding differently so that when you go to S4, your custom code compliance is going to be smaller. Um, 
I mean, there's a lot you can do today. Just uh, interestingly, there's um, we had a blog series on bluefinsolutions.com and just search for starting small. Mm. And, and, and it's, it's all free tools that SAP and we're describing how to use them. And one of them is the workload analysis where we look at how the system is used. And interestingly, one of the customers we were talking to uh, had a critical process around HR and it's a union regulated company so they could not miss the deadline of Monday morning to send the checks um, so they were looking at Sweet on HANA just to gain time and then when we evaluated this for it say well you know it's a batch process so user interface doesn't matter there mm. because it's all batch and so uh, it's interesting that yeah we had different output mm. and different things but yeah definitely there's things you can do today already to help um, on that path. And you guys will post a lot of that on your blog for people to check exactly, out. Exactly, yeah. Okay. So they can, they can run Good. it themselves or we can, of course, help them do, go All through right. them. We'll pop a link into the description for that. I, what, I, what I'm struck by looking through your, your deck on is that the methodology around building a business case, you've gotten much more thorough with it. So you've, you've learned a lot through the last couple of years for sure. Absolutely, yeah. I think it's 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 first two exposures to customers really because yeah. when we started, it was really about HANA, HANA, HANA. Therefore, it was very technical infrastructure right. and sizing. Uh, but then when we went from HANA, HANA, HANA to S4 HANA, well, then you have to open up your eyes and, and listen to different questions and and therefore we had to open to to yeah more an a more holistic approach right? which includes more things around operational efficiency exactly and, yeah. and things like that absolutely yeah, shared services as well i mean all of those implications right. and and you haven't touched so much like the 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 big roi things that might lie ahead for example building a new application on the on the system or tapping into a new a whole new business market, right? But those are the kinds of things you could start to build on once you have the system in place. Well, so. yes, I know that's what we're saying. And maybe we could leapfrog that, but yeah, we we don't touch yeah. because usually usually customers are evaluating as for right are in one particular place, yeah, as opposed to the customers looking at Leonardo. I think they're in a different right. place. So I think again, this dichotomy we were talking about about these customers that are yes. Okay, well, we should wrap, but just for the listeners, what are you going to be looking for from, from TechEd? Because uh, we, we've covered a lot of ground today, and I just want to leave people with just a couple of thoughts on what will you be looking for? What, what do you think SAP should try to accomplish next week? What are you trying to learn? That kind of stuff. Well, so again, coming from this s hana Center of Excellence background, uh, the things that I'm going to look at more is around uh, s hana and Cloud ERP. Mm -hmm. I think, um, yeah, the release in 1708 was more interesting, but I want to see exactly what it does. There's some cool features in there. You want to look at the co-pilot. Have you heard about that? Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so so I've seen it, but I haven't touched it. And that's Which is SAP's bot, essentially. Exactly. Yeah, it's internal. It's I think it's yeah. the first iteration. You're going to see improvements yeah. on there. Uh, but there's some some cool stuff around it. Um, APIs integration to me is is key, and, and TechEd is definitely the right uh, mm. location to know about you know, what we could do more. And of course, starting to look at Leonardo uh, because that's that's going to be interesting down the road. Well, cool. Good luck with the transition between these two shows. That's going to be an interesting, <laughs> perhaps Absolutely. startling contrast, which should be an interesting to see. Absolutely, yeah. Well, thanks for helping us make sense of all this. And, and SAP, please clean up your planning, consolidation, and analytics <laughs> uh, messaging, messaging so that people yeah. can understand and move on because I, I still have a popsicle headache. I might need therapy after some of those <laughs> slides. God bless Scott. He, he came up with a bunch of if-then sort of diagrams yeah, to help you through it. Like, But I don't want to have to like... That just for, yeah. for people... <laughs> yeah, I might need to put that on a pillow so I can go to sleep and <laughs> <laughs> look at it before I go to bed at night. Anyway, thanks a lot for your time, Julian. Absolutely. Take yeah. care.